Well, hello, welcome to Wheel Life, the video diary that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. And in this episode, I'm going to be putting wheels up against each other to find out which is the fastest and the best on an off-road circuit. So let's get started. Now, honestly, I don't know where I got this brilliant idea from, but I'm going to copyright it and nobody else can then do it. But I'm going to take some of the best wheels from the wheels I've got, a wheel from the olden days, and I'm going to put them against each other on a circuit. And each time I get a new wheel, I'll get to try a new wheel, I'll bring it here and I'll take it around the same circuit and I'll start to have a leaderboard of lap times. What a genius idea. I can't believe that nobody's thought of that before. So I'm standing at the start line and the camera's going to flatten the start. You won't appreciate how steep this is, but believe me, this is quite a steep drop off. Uh, you come down this hill and I can't even walk down it without jogging. And that means you've got to stand right back on the footplates to have any sense of uh, control over the wheel before you head off then down into the first long straight. So after the first start, you come down the hill on the grass section and then you enter the first of three hairpin bends on the course. And what makes this extra tricky is the hairpin bends are not on grass. They're on a hard surface covered in gravel. And that makes the whole cornering very tricky. If you don't break down in time, you're going to go sliding off and you're going to do yourself a mischief. And we don't want that to happen. So when you've completed the final hairpin bend, there is a long straight up the hill towards this final tricky section, which is quite a steep hill. Now, it doesn't look much on camera, um, but it's quite a steep climb up this hill. And this is going to be a test for all the wheels uh, to see what their motor's like and how they cope with a steep incline. The camera is going to level it out and make it not seem very much so, but that is really quite steep. Believe me on that one. And then there is a mad dash along the top of the hill, back to where you started from and across the start finish line. So first up on the track today is this. This is my old monster, uh, the original monster. This is the one that I did a thousand mile adventure on with Ian Samson from Speed Feet. It's still got the stickers on there from our thousand mile trip. And it's also got some bird crap on there also from the thousand mile trip. That's four years ago. This has got a 1,600 watt motor. I'm riding this first because even though it's the biggest wheel, it's the oldest wheel. And of all the wheels I'm riding today, this is the one with the least powerful motor. But it's got a 22 inch wheel. That means going over the bumps should be no problem at all. But getting up the slopes is going to be a real struggle because this is quite a heavy wheel with a relatively small motor to get it going. Let's see how the old monster does. So here we go, I'm going to name the parts of the course as we go around. That first section is a huge steep drop off and decline, so we're going to call that the British economy. And then it's a quick downhill all the way to the first hairpin bend. You really do pick up some speed, so you've got to brake, brake hard, hard, hard. And the monster coat with that okay, but then getting the power back onto it up that incline towards the second hairpin bend was a real effort. And this is an elbow shaped hairpin, I want to call this the Idris elbow hairpin, round it again and picks up speed beautifully down that second straight towards the pond corner and you're going to brake, brake, brake hard, leaning back as much as you can, big old wheel and there's not much power in it for its size compared to the more modern wheels, so really leaning forward trying to get as much out of that as I can, but that big wheel is just absorbing all those bumps really a bumpy section here coming up a few potholes and things that could throw you off your wheel if you're not careful uh, but it just copes with that beautifully but it's just hard work uh, will it cope will it get up that steep steep section there's a crush with me i was trying to do audio at the time oh yeah i got the hell i was trying to do audio at the time uh, but all the audio was too bad to use hence my voiceover it got up that hill and across the line so the next wheel to go through the circuit is this, the KS18XL. This has got a 2200 watt motor, so this is smaller and more powerful than the Monster. Not as old, but it's done a lot more miles. The Monster only did a thousand miles and then I put it to retirement. And that's it, I did the thousand mile trip and then it hung on a wall as a decorative ornament. This has done about 3000 miles and it's had a battering in that time. But smaller, 18 inch wheel, lighter wheel, bigger motor should make for a faster circuit time let's see here we go then 
KS18XL down the British economy and compared to the Monster this is such a light wheel it feels like you're riding a butterfly compared to the Monster that I was riding before into the first hairpin bend yeah you can leave that braking much later you don't have to brake half as uh, early as you do on the Monster and it takes next to no effort it's so light the weight is just all you need to, to really propel this up the hill it picks up speed beautifully towards Idris Elba looking good picking up speed no problem at all and you can leave the braking as late as you possibly can yeah around the hairpin you can almost hear my audio commentary from my uh, my earlier attempts but the audio was just so bad wasn't usable and up the long so really long straight what's long straight this is up the uh, the peter crouch straight we're going to call this the peter crouch straight towards this steep climb up i'm going to call this uh, jacob's ladder hill so peter crouch into jacob's ladder will i cope up that steep hill yeah it did take the pace out of it but it was so much better than the monster racing across the top of the hill and across the line and now we're stepping up a gear even further. The next wheel I'm going to ride is the Veteran Sherman. Now this wheel has got a 2,500 watt motor, a 20 inch wheel and a rugged off-road tyre that really does eat up that off-road uh, gravel and that situation. So I'm hoping I can take those corners a bit faster perhaps. And I wonder if I'll feel the bumps quite as much. But it's a bit heavier than the KS18XL. So how will that affect it when it comes to climbing up those hills? Only one way to find out, let's get on the track. So this is my, well, my favourite wheel at the moment, down the British economy and that off-road tyre just perfect for this kind of an environment, absolutely loves it. And braking, yeah, picked up so much speed on my first attempt, I didn't brake in time, I went straight on the first hairpin, up the hill, no problem at all keep it going there's no power pads on this wheel so just using my body weight through Idris elbow hairpin bend there and back on the power and down the hill will the drone keep up with me towards the pond corner break 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 as late as you can but you don't want to go straight on there you don't want to exceed the track limits and then onto the power up Peter Crouch it's not often you're going to say that 20 inch tyre just making light work of all those bumps up to Jacob's Ladder will it get up the hill? absolutely no problem at all there's no hill there round the corner and a race across the top a sprint and across the line Whew, I have got a proper sweat on now uh, and that's mainly because I've just picked up the next wheel out of the car and that is the Bigod EX suspension unicycle this is another 20 inch wheel so the same size wheel as the veteran Sherman uh, but this has got a 2800 watt motor uh, so it's up from the 2500 in the Sherman so more power but an awful lot more wheel this is very very heavy ridiculously stupid heavy wheel how will that affect it we'll find out I should point out I have got little power pads on these so maybe I should have taken those off but I'm not taking them off because I don't have a sticky wheel so they've got power pads on there so that will help it's also got a suspension uh, in this and that might help when it comes to the bumps uh, and the rough bits of the circuit uh, but let's find out who knows this is a proper true test let's do the same circuit again on the suspension unicycle so this is it down the British economy on the suspension unicycle and you feel so high on that unicycle it felt like even a bigger drop off than before but so much speed and pace and yeah i've got the power pads and if i didn't have them there is no way i would have been able to stop that wheel in time and again getting up the hill leaning into those power pads bit of a cheat we call them cheat pads i'm sure without it it would be a bit more hard work around idris elbow no problem at all looking neat and tidy it sometimes looks slow but as we know slow can sometimes mean fast picking up loads of speed brake 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 hard 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 brake into that pond corner and then trying to get as much power through that wheel as I can up the Peter Crouch long straight now this section should be smooth as butter on that suspension wheel but it was rattling my filling so maybe I need to just adjust that suspension setting a bit more to make it perfect for that environment how will it cope up Jacob's ladder 
absolutely ate it up for us. No effort at all, and across the top of the hill, and over the finish line. Well, that's it. I'm back now, and what a fantastic afternoon spent just using all my top equipment, my best gear, using my top jacket, my best helmet, all my top wheels, my best knee pads on. So using all my top gear, and that's why I've decided to call that my top gear test track. And each time I get a new wheel, I'll go out to the top gear track, and I will put it through its paces and build up my top gear uh, leaderboard. I can't see there being any problem with that. So let's move on and let's give you some times. The Monster. The Monster is the biggest wheel, 22 inches, and with the slowest motor, 1,600 watts of power. It's also the granddaddy of them all, came out in 2016. In its day, it was the flagship wheel. Uh, but right now it's showing its age. But even so, it was a beautiful wheel to ride around that circuit. That big tyre just was fantastic, so comfortable to ride, but getting it motivated out of those corners, getting it moving up those hills, particularly that last climb, was a real effort. The Monster came in at 1 minute 25.2. No idea if that's good or bad at this stage. But let's compare that to the Kingsong 18XL, a much smaller wheel, 18 inches in diameter, but a more powerful motor with a 2,200 watt motor. Much more agile, much more easy to get motivated because it's so light, so when you want to come out those corners, you just lean and it's easy to get going. Compared to the Monster, the 18XL came in at 1 minute 19.2, so a full six seconds quicker than the Monster. But let's move on to the Sherman and the Bigode EX. A bit of a head to head there. The Sherman, well that is a fantastic wheel to ride. It's slightly bigger. It's got 20 inch wheels with that fantastic chunky tyre that just eats up the grass and spits out the gravel as you race around the track. It's got a slightly bigger motor, 2,500 watts of power there. Uh, so it's made for the off-road uh, running and it just rode like a dream. That came through the course in 1 minute 14.1. So quite significantly faster than the KS18 XL. I should point out as well that for each of those wheels, I gave them three goes around the circuit and reporting the best time that I achieved from those three runs. So I gave them all a proper go. Let's move on to the Bigode EX. Similar to the Sherman, it has got a 20 inch wheel with a fantastic tire that loves the off-road and loves the tarmac too. It is heavy though. So despite it having 2,800 watts of motor, it's a heavy wheel, but it does have suspension. So in theory, that should help it with those bumps and lumps on the off-road circuit. But actually, it elevates your riding position, so you're a bit higher. So when you're banking into some of those corners, you feel a bit off-centre. And it feels a bit weird to ride sometimes. But the Bigode EX came in at 1 minute 9.2. So 5 or 6 seconds faster than the Sherman. Now that is quite a revelation. Uh, but there you have it. That's my top gear track times. As I said, I'm going to build up those times as I introduce new wheels. I get a chance to review them and I'll put those track times on here. So come back and check that out in future episodes. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please do give me a thumbs up, a like and a subscribe. Add your comments below. Tell me the wheels that you ride and how you think they will perform on my Top Gear track. Maybe one day I'll invite people to come and have a, a ride around my Top Gear track on a reasonably priced wheel. And perhaps we can have a little leaderboard of that as well. I genuinely don't know where I get these ideas from. But that's it for this time. Hopefully I'll see you again soon on Wheel Life. Thank you. Mm -hmm.